Okay, so uh, these are going to be my final thoughts. This is my final consensus on the rise of Skywalker. So uh, I have a lot I want to say again, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so um, now if you've not watched the previous video that I uploaded prior to this one, and you want to know the nitty gritty details of what I liked about the movie or what I loved about the movie or what I hated about the movie or what I didn't like about the movie, then go watch the video that I uploaded just before this one, because that's where I dive deep into all that. I'll touch on maybe a few things in this video in regards to that, but that's not where I want the focus of this video to be. So go watch that one. It's spoiler heavy, by the way. You can't talk about this movie without talking about spoilers. And there's going to be spoilers in this video as well. But um, yeah, so uh, go and watch that first. It's about a 30 minute video. Now, um, the first 10 minutes of that video, I'm talking about the why in why I liked the movie, because I did like the movie, but there's a very specific reason as to why. So in this video, I want to give my final thoughts on that. And there's going to be a lot of things I'm going to repeat here, but because I don't plan on doing another video on the rise of Skywalker, I mean, I don't want to rule it out completely. I mean, maybe something will come to me and be like, oh shit, you know, I got to talk about that. But um, I feel pretty good. I mean, I've seen the movie twice uh, and I feel pretty good of, of coming to this sort of complete conclusion here. So, um, okay, but there are going to be things I'm going to touch on that you've heard me say before, but they're so important. So yes, I did like the movie and I've seen it twice now. I saw it once with my girlfriend and then I saw it again with my buddy Bruce yesterday. With uh, I went with him and his 16-year-old son. He's got two kids, but it was just the 16-year-old that was there. And that's always a blast because I've known Bruce. He's my best friend. I've known him for 30 years and uh, essentially since we were kids. And, uh, you know, it, it just feels, it, it's always surreal to be able to be hanging out with him and his kids because we've known each other since we were kids and it's just a blast. It's just awesome. No matter how old they get or we get, it's always, it's always surreal to me. So uh, we had a good time. And uh, I found myself liking the movie more the second time that I watched it. Now, what do I mean by that? I did, look, the first time I watched the movie, I gave it about a 7, 7.5 out of 10. I think it pretty much is still the same. I'm not saying that I like the movie more and therefore it's now a 10 out of 10. I'm just simply saying that I, you know, I knew what to expect. I could settle in and really enjoy it. And I picked up on certain nuances and details that I didn't see the first time around because it's that kind of movie. There's so much in it. The pacing is so fast. There's so much going on that you're definitely going to need a second or even third watch to really grasp everything that's happening. So, uh, that's what I mean. And I think for me, the rise of Skywalker will probably settle in and around a 7.58. It's never going to be more than that for me, but there's a very specific reason as to why. And I'm going to touch on those reasons again in this video because they are vitally important because we live in a day and age now in the world of fandom where there's just no nuance anymore. Things are either a 10 out of 10 or it's shit. And if you think something is a, you know, eight out of 10, that means you think it's garbage, you know? And then of course you got Rotten Tomatoes and there's so many people that really don't understand what, how Rotten you know, tomatoes works. You got people that, you know, tell you, don't, don't listen to Rotten Tomatoes. They're fucking bullshit. But, but yet if it's, you know, fitting the narrative that they're pushing all of a sudden, you listen to Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, there are people that are saying, don't listen to the Rotten Tomatoes critic fucking thing. Joker was a, don't listen to them. It's just garbage. Fuck. But if they hate the rise of Skywalker and they want to hate the rise of Skywalker, all of a sudden Rotten Tomatoes means something. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just the, the hypocrisy is unbelievable. And I think that's largely because people don't understand how Rotten Tomatoes works, but I'll talk about that in a second. So, um, yeah, there's a very specific reason why I was able to like this movie, and it's because of my expectations. And it's because, like I mentioned previously in another video, um, that The Rise of Sky, uh, sorry, The Last Jedi was the single most disappointing experience of my movie going life. It was. I've never been more disappointed leaving a movie theater than I was leaving The Last Jedi. And it wasn't because my 40 year old fanboy expectations were not met, it's because there were serious character development and story and narrative structure issues that I had with that movie. Listen, I liked that Luke was a hermit on the island. I thought that was okay. I just didn't believe in the justification for it. I didn't believe in the reasons why he was there. He was cut off from the force. He did that. He did this, that, and the other. He didn't feel Han's death because he removed himself. All these things 
I just didn't believe this character would do. That doesn't mean this character is not going to have a, a bad day at the office, you know, or that he's not going to feel a certain way or certain things. But the entire movie, everything from, from that, from those justifications to, you know, Finn and Rose and Canto Bite and Ray and Ren and Snoke and the whole... I didn't believe it. It felt like it was being avant-garde for the sake of being avant-garde, subverting expectations because, well, hey, they're going to think we're going to do this. Let's just do this. It, I didn't... All the decisions that were made, in my opinion, were not the decisions that you make when you are the second act of a three-act play. That doesn't mean you don't make it your own or, you know, take certain risks, you know, uh, and things like that. But it just, the formula must remain intact. And The Last Jedi ended on a positive note with hopefulness and prosperity and 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 I just, you know, with, you know, Broom Boy and I, I it, it's, it's, no. The second act of a three-act play is always the darkest for the protagonist. It's where you see the most growth. It's where you see the, the most resistance and the struggle and the learning. I didn't see that. I mean, there's glimpses of it in moments, but the entire picture was disjointed and, and strange and, and weird. It didn't feel like Star Wars. It didn't look like, well, I mean, it looked like it because the effects are always good, but you know what I'm saying? And I could, I mean, I could really go into it deeply, but I'm, I can, yeah, so I gotta, I gotta keep myself on track. But you know, that is why I knew when I left the theater, like I mentioned in my other video, I knew it was over. Now, what do I mean by over? I knew that this trilogy, now some may think that they thought that right out of the gate with The Force Awakens. Fine, fair enough. I'm talking about me. I knew this trilogy was done because I knew that the best analogy I can use is, is the analogy, uh, or not an analogy, sorry, but, but I read... The best example I can use, I should say, is the other day I read somebody who said that The Force Awakens was a great setup, and it was as if Ryan Johnson came in and made another setup. So here's your setup, The Force Awakens. Ryan Johnson says, okay, great. Now, you know what? I don't like your villain. I don't like this. I don't like that. Oh, come on. Finn and Ray. <laughs> no, Finn and Rose. You know, all these things and just complete. It, it was as if we had two first acts, right? The Force Awakens is a first act and The Last Jedi is like an alternate first act. So... And that's why it makes sense to me when I, listen, there isn't a review that I've read. There isn't a video I've watched. There isn't a comment that you're going to post in the comment section below that is, that is going to surprise me, positive or negative, but they should have done this. If there was a plan, why didn't they do this? Palpatine doesn't make, uh, doesn't, what, everything. And I don't say that because, you know, to say, oh, I'm so good. I just, you know, look at me. I'm not saying it because of that. I'm saying it for the reasons that I'm telling you that. I knew instantly it was over because the second chapter is so fundamentally important that if you fuck that up and essentially nothing happens, it doesn't just kind of like it's its own standalone film, you're in trouble. So when people say that, well, you know, the rise of Skywalker feels so, so convoluted and so like the pacing was so fast and so rushed. Well, yeah. That didn't surprise me because J.J. Abrams was essentially making up for lost time. So when people say it feels like it's two movies in one, yeah, because it essentially is. The Rise of Skywalker is not a sequel to TLJ. It's a sequel to The Force Awakens and essentially for all intents and purposes. And that's why it almost feels like it's the second and third act because it, it had, to, I remember saying to my buddy Bruce and everybody I was talking to about it, as soon as The Last Jedi ended, I said, they killed Snoke. Who's the big baddie? Ren wasn't developed enough to the point where you would believe that he would be the big baddie. He's a baddie. He's a baddie. But he wasn't nurtured and developed enough to the point where you feel that he was commanding the level of respect that Snoke had. So I said to my buddy Bruce, I remember saying, you know, and this is two years ago. I said, JJ's got to create conflict and resolution all in one movie. And he's got to introduce somebody, some, like, what is Thrawn going to come back? Like, who's it going to be? It's Palpatine. Do I believe that Palpatine was the plan from the beginning? No, of course not. Do I believe that Rey being a Palpatine was the plan from the beginning? Maybe, because you don't necessarily need 
Uncle Palps, as I like to call him, uh, back from the dead in order for Rey to be a Palpatine. Now, obviously, that makes the dynamic, her facing her own blood, and that makes it really cool. But you don't necessarily need that. So Rey being a Palpatine may have been in the cards all along. But do I believe that Palpatine was going to come back? No. Snoke was your baddie. 100%. I don't believe Palpatine was going to... I agree with you. I believe that. But Ryan Johnson basically said, I don't like your villain. I don't like him. I think he's dumb. He didn't actually say that. I'm saying that for effect. But I'm just saying, he kills him. Well, now what? JJ's not going to introduce somebody we've never heard of because we're not emotionally attached to it, right? And the stakes are not as high. So what does he do? He falls back on what we know. Does it feel a little shoehorned in? Yep. Does it feel a little out of left field? Sure. Does it undermine the end of Return of the Jedi for some? Some it does. It doesn't for me. And this is why it doesn't for me. Because in The Rise of Skywalker, Emperor Palpatine says, when Ren says something like, you're dead, or no, you know, Palpatine is dead or something, he repeats the line from Revenge of the Sith. He says, the pathway, to, or uh, the dark side is the pathway to many abilities, some considered to be, and then there's a dramatic pause, and it flashes, you know, lightning on his face, he says, unnatural. Well, he says that in the opera scene in Revenge of the Sith, where he's basically talking about Darth Plagueis the Wise and how, you know, cheating death and all that kind of stuff. So that insinuates to me that he was able to do that. How specifically? I don't know. He's in really rough shape. You know, he's hooked up to a machine. He's pretty much dead for all intents and purposes, right? Because he 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 also says in the rise of Skywalker, he says, I've died once before. So for me, does it undermine the end of Return of the Jedi? No. Be, I thought it was going to, but seeing it play out, it doesn't because Anakin still fulfilled the prophecy. He brought balance to the force and most importantly, he saved his son's life. He saved his son's life. If he didn't save his, if he didn't save his son's life, Luke would have died, the Empire and the Emperor and Vader would have won. But he sacrificed himself to save his son's life and also killed the Emperor for all intents and purposes, in the process, he was gone. Because keep in mind, the Emperor's not back in this movie. The Emperor's not back. The Emperor is on the verge of coming back, right? See, that's, you know, that's one of the misconceptions. Oh, the Emperor's back. Well, he is, but he's on the verge of coming back. And then it takes his own... Bl it's, it's my favorite thing about this film is that Ray's a Palpatine. And it takes Hitler's grandchild to rise up and say, Whoa! You ain't coming back. No fucking way. Right? And it takes a Palpatine to defeat the Palpatine once and for all. But does that undermine Vader's sacrifice? No, because Rey's not the chosen one. Rey's not the chosen. It wasn't said that she was the chosen one. It wasn't alluded to. to it wasn't alluded to that she was the chosen one. Right? It's a different set of circumstances. Right? Completely different. So I don't. I still think the end of Return of the Jedi. Uh, it's, it's still there. You know, Vader is redeemed. He saves his son's life and he throws the emperor away, bringing peace, relative peace anyway, you know, to the galaxy for many, many years. Uh, unfortunately, it was set up in Revenge of the Sith that, hey, keep in mind that he might have figured out a way to come back. So if you think of Revenge of the Sith and watch Return of the Jedi, you should as a fan think, but is, well, maybe, maybe not, right? And then you could say to yourself, well, but who's to say he's not going to come back again? Well, probably because you can use the justification of it was his own lightning that destroyed him in the rise of Skywalker, tearing his body to pieces and away. Whereas at the end of Return of the Jedi, we didn't see what happened. We saw his body fall, but who knows what happened down there? Did he hit? Did he land? He is, after all, a Sith. I mean, he certainly can do crazy magic shit. Maybe he was hanging by a thread, blood all over the place, hanging barely alive. Some Sith, you know, loyalists came to his aid and, I don't know, put him on a ship and took him away or something. I mean, he still won. Anakin still won. You know, he still fulfilled the prophecy, in my opinion. So, um, and in this movie, 
he's not back back. He's on the verge. He's the threat that's about to just come back. And his own daughter says no, or his own granddaughter, excuse me, says no fucking way. So I love that she's a Palpatine. And like I said, she's not a gray Jedi, but she's the closest we've seen to one on screen. And that's cool because she possesses both the light and dark. That's amazing. I love that. I fucking love that. So for me, that is, at the end of the day, why I have the consensus I have is because my expectations were there's only so much JJ can do. And because of the second chapter, the middle act. So should it be this? Yes. Should it have been this? Yes. Yes, it, it should be the end game of Star Wars. It should be the return of the king of Star Wars. It should be. I agree. But it's not. And it never was going to be. It never was going to be. The only way it may have gotten close, I said to my buddy Bruce two years ago, I said, what the fuck are they going to do? Like, what are they going to do? And I remember saying, I hope they make nine and 10. I hope they cut the ties of the tradition and make nine and 10, because then you give yourself some breathing room, something this new movie desperately needed, right? Some breathing room, some context, you know, um, just to flesh some things out. And when I found out that they weren't going to do that, I was like, oh, shit. Okay, well, maybe it'll be a three-hour movie. Because, you know, the film is two hours and 21 minutes long. They could tack on an extra 21 minutes, flesh some things out, and it probably would have uh, it probably would have helped. But then we find out it's two hours and 21 minutes. And I, I, I remember saying, I'm, okay, I, I know what this is going to be. It's going to be a Force Awakens level of entertainment, great Star Wars, with some questions answered and some cool shit. Great. I'm in. Let's do it. And then when I found out that she's a Palpatine, I was like, it's awesome. Okay, let's do it. So that's why I was able to like this movie. Because I knew it was never going... The only way this, The Rise of Skywalker, could have been the, the movie that everybody wanted, everybody, was as if they had gone back and redone episode eight. Well, they're not going to do that. You know they're not going to I know they're not going to. They can't do that. So it's, it's not, it, not going to happen. So that's why. So yes, The Rise of Skywalker in many ways does feel crammed and convoluted and there is a lot going on. But like I said, that's primarily because you were watching the second and third act in the third movie. Um, and you know, look, if they had, if they had done it right and maybe this was, and say this was the plan all along, hypothetically, okay, Palpatine's coming back, raise a Palpatine, uh, then really the end of The Last Jedi, if it would have been called that, uh, but the end of the second act, the middle film, if you were doing it right, you would have had, uh, you know, us find out that Ray's a Palpatine at the end of the second act, right? The middle film. Oh my God, what's going on? And you nurture Palpatine returning in that movie. Maybe he doesn't return in that film, but let's say Snoke dies and, you know, there's this ominous signal coming from the unknown regions and it's insidiously moving to, you know, across the galaxy and Snoke is dead and you'd think people would be happy, but there's more out there. What's going on? And ray has been feeling all these things inside of her and all of a sudden by the end of the movie she finds out she's a palpatine maybe she's about to take the throne and and palps is back and we see him going <laughs> it's like oh my god what the hell is gonna happen and foe uh, foe uh, finn and poe and everybody's like oh my god no ray oh my god we got it and boom it ends it's like holy shit that's how you end the second act it's like, what's going to happen? I mean, obviously, you know, it's going to be, re that's how fairy tales go. You know, it's because she's going to be redeemed in some sort of way, but that's the formula of a fairy tale. And, and that would have been like, holy shit, but that didn't happen. So you had to get your second and third act in one movie. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that's why it's the way it is. And I knew that was going to happen, you know? And, and I just, it's, yeah. And I guess I was just able to enjoy it for one. Considering what JJ had to work with, I think it's it's a it's a it's solid, you know, and it's got some layers, it's got some symbolism and some deep moving moments, and and it's you know it is what it is. But could it and should it have been epic? Yes, but the Last Jedi wasn't. The the, the problem is your middle chapter, not the Rise of Skywalker. Okay, 
Um, so yeah, so those are my final thoughts, my general consensus. I like the movie 7.5, eight out of 10. Um, it is what it is. And I'm able to like it because of the reasons that I said, that doesn't mean you have to like it, but I just, it, as I said, there isn't a review negative or positive or any comment that you're going to put below. That's going to shock me because I'm actually surprised that there are people out there thinking it, 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 it was going to be more than what it was. How could it have been? We tripped on the 10 yard line. How could it have been? It's like we're running a marathon and we can see the finish line and there's a rope there, right? Or a ribbon and we're running and all of a sudden we trip and fall. It's like, you know, and people pass us. Well, we're not going to win now. Yeah, but we should have won. Yeah, we should have, but we didn't. We tripped. No, but they, they should have. Yeah, we did. We we should have worked out better. Yeah, you should have. Yeah, we should have had better shoes. Oh, you should have. No, we shouldn't have had that heavy meal. You're right. But we did. And, you know, so just get up, brush yourself off. You know, you're still going to beat all those people. You're not going to come in first. So, so you came in 10th. Okay, well, hey, you know, it is what it is. But run to it like you're a champ. And, you know, they did the best they could. And that's how I feel about it. I like the movie. Yeah, I think it's all right. But I, but that's why. You know, uh, for those of you that are not new to my channel, uh, you know how I operate here. For those of you that are new, you may think that I'm a shill and that I'll just take anything that Hollywood throws at me. And, and that's certainly not the case. I really don't give a frog's fat ass whether you agree with me or not. Uh, I'm here to tell you what I think. Now, I say it so bluntly, not to be condescending. I say it bluntly so there's no, you know, it, it, it's very clear. And I say it like that because I want you guys to know that you're always going to get what's real with me. I'm going to be honest with you about how I feel about something. I don't care if it's Halloween. I don't care if it's Star Wars. I don't care if it's Elm Street or Friday the 13th. I'm going to tell you how I feel. And if you agree with me, that's awesome. If you don't, that's okay too. But I am not here to just tell you what you want to hear. I'm, tell I'm here to tell you what I think. And then you make up your own mind. And that's important to me. That's why I'm blunt about it. I know it can come off as a little like, oh, that's kind of, you know, but I don't mean it like that. I just, I don't want there to be any sort of, you know, room for interpretation. Like, this is how I am. This is how I feel. And this is why. Uh, and hopefully you guys do that too, because I think it's awesome. So anyways, my name's Dave McRae. That is my general consensus on the rise of Skywalker. I liked it. Comment below and let me know how much you hated it, because... <laughs> There was a guy last night at the movie theater uh, that apparently hated the movie so much he he threw his tin of popcorn and it bounced off uh, <laughs> the garbage can and hit somebody. And I'm like, dude, dude, if you're watching, like, dude, it's a movie. Relax. But it's not a movie. It's my life. Star Wars. Well, then you need... You <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'll uh I gotta get out of here. All links in the description, meantime, in between time, and all that kind of jazz. Alright, I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, I think I did I move the camera? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> Cheers.